Servicing locos can be a real pain in the butt, but do we have to do it in the first place? Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie, and today we'll take a look at servicing locos. As you may be aware, down at Pico in Devon, they've got some wonderful layouts uh, open to the public. And when I went down there one time, I spoke to the guys in charge and asked them how often they service their locos. And they said, when they break. It's a really interesting point. And having done a little bit of investigative work on the internet, a lot of people seem to think that the average motor in one of our locos should last around 100 hours. I don't really know, I have never burnt one out, but perhaps you have, and if you have done that, then please leave a comment down below. But should we take apart a perfectly serviceable loco just because we think it ought to be oiled? So how can we do this scientifically? Well, I have a steam engine, courtesy of Tim, thank you very much indeed. And this is kind of brand new, straight out of the box. I've had it on a rolling road to run it in. I have my original class 25 sound fitted Backman and it was this little loco that got me into the hobby in the first place when I first came across DC sound, uh, DCC sound. I was kind of sold on it. And I've also got a Hymec and this is a very rare Hymec because it has on its roof four horns unlike this one that's had it smashed down and this one, which had it smashed in. Because you really need one of these small foam body cradles to stop the damage. Having said that, it's still easy to do damage because of the little ladders and everything else, but at least you have a fighting chance with something like that. So to do a comparison between the pre-servicing and the post-servicing, I'll run all three of these locos around the layout. I'll warm them up, and then time them on a circuit and also see how much current they draw during that circuit to see if it changes uh, pre to post servicing. And also to see if once it's been serviced, if it actually runs around any quicker. The current drawn at the moment, because the, uh, all the locos are off the layout except for the Pullman is 0 0.07 of an amp. So what I shall do is simply run one loco at a time around the layout at a set speed and notice how a note how long it takes to do a circuit. So there she goes off at speed step 60 on the Dynamis. Now with the class 25 doing circuits, with the sound off and the lights off, you can see the power has gone up to 0 0.17 or 1.8 of an amp. And timing is as it comes across the viaduct, it takes one minute, two seconds to reach there. So now let's move on to the iMac. This is clearly a quicker loco and it's on speed step 25 and as we can see it's pulling around about 0.3 of an amp and at this speed the Hymec does a circuit in 43 seconds. And finally Backman's H1 Atlantic. And this little steam engine pulls 0 0.12 of an amp. But its running is rather erratic. It could be just in need of a damn good oiling, or perhaps this decoder isn't exactly um, ideal, let's say. She'll stop on that point and then carry on. She kind of detects a, a short and then moves on. So uh, it could well be a decoder issue. So there's not much point in timing it because it just seems to stop on every set of points. 
What a mystery. So we've had a look at how the locos run, so let's start mending things that aren't broken. Books of reference, I use Ramsey's British Model Trains. So this comes in two volumes and this actually is edition eight. There is an edition nine, um, but there isn't an edition 10 and BRM don't appear to have any um, inclination to, to, to publish a, an edition 10 up to now. Anyway, um, in here I've looked up my class 25 and it gives the year of manufacture as 2003. Well, not before 2003. Um, it lists all the various editions. Actually, my own class 25 isn't actually listed, but anyway, it's a decent book of reference. Um, and it tells me that the one I've probably got is uh, uh, sound PR, is DCC sound chip fitted, blah, blah. Right, so being the sad individual that I am, I have a book full of um, spreadsheets and all the instructions that come with all my locos. Um, if you're a DC guy, then you would keep them DCC, perhaps a little bit more complicated because you might keep all the function mapping and that kind of stuff. So I've hauled out my class 25 from my purchase, which must be 15 years ago. And it tells me um, basically that the DCC function, so we're not really interested in that. And the rest of the instructions are pretty straightforward. It shows me where to oil it and how to remove the body shell, which is kind of useful really, isn't it? So let's get it apart. I've mentioned in the past about these foam cradles, they're brilliant. Here's my loco. And there's a couple of other things wrong with this loco, which is sort of given me the inspiration to do this in the first place. And that's the fact that if you look closely here, hopefully you can see that the window has been pushed in and the driver has relocated um, to, I think he's in the middle at the moment. So he needs gluing back in and the window needs fixing. So let's get this little beastie apart. Now I've put a little bit of blue foam down just to stop the screws bouncing everywhere. And unlike the high mech, there are no horns on the, uh, on the top of this model. So we pop that into the cradle and reading the instructions, it says there are four screws, one by each corner of the fuel slash water tank. So there must be four screws in there. So we'll firstly, we'll whip those out. It's always used to have something soft like this foam sheet or perhaps a blanket because when I turn it over, if it was a hard surface, the screws would just bounce around and um, disappear. And I'm sure we've all lost some in the past. So if I turn this upside down or the right way up as it were, some screws may come out and there's the four screws and I can feel the body loosening up. So that should obviously do. Beautiful. Come straight off. That was easy, wasn't it? And uh, here's the end, which needs a bit of TLC. Poor chap. He's rather unusual. He's got legs. They don't usually have legs. They usually cut off. Anyway, so I need a bit of glue to pop that back in and then we need to reglaze this uh, this window back in. And I've checked through my box of glues and I think I've lent someone else my glue and glaze. So we will risk it for a biscuit with um, some polystyrene cement, I think, and we'll see how that goes. And I've also just noticed, turning it upside down, that two other little plastic bits have also fallen off. And uh, I'd like to show you where they go, but currently I don't have the faintest idea. After a little bit of investigative work, if you can see there inside the body shell, there's one of those similar bits of plastic. So they're actually glued on to the inside of the shell, probably to stop the red lights bleeding uh, around that area. So I've got one there, these two on the other end, you, of course you'd expect to see one of them glued in there, but there isn't. So I've now got three out of four 
locomotive maintenance what joy isn't it anyway i'll also glue those two back in and see if the fourth one turns up now i've never been a lover of super glues but today i'm using uh rocket rapid bonds to five to ten seconds what i tend to do is decant it on a cocktail stick and then dab it's kind of in position there I find that trying to use the nozzle from the um, from the container itself is just fraught with danger so if we can try and pop him in position and hopefully that glue should hold and I've got a friend to so go next to him I've cut his legs off through sheer through sheer violence of it all so I'll Pop some glue on him and on his back because that tends to hit the back of the seat. Put him in position, then hopefully in <laughs> five to ten seconds, all will be well. I must confess, I have limited confidence in super glues. The only thing that I find they're excellent for is gluing my fingers together. But then again, they, I think that was the purpose they woo blue. <laughs> Whoops. Um, the thing they're invented for actually wasn't it was uh, for medical purposes was bonding skin look at the mess i'm in now so i'm just trying to get a bit more super glue underneath his backside in the seat without making too much of a mess <laughs> thank you again charlie anyway we seem to be getting there and now i shall attempt to glue those other missing components um, from the ends of the body shell. Well now we get down to the more serious aspects of lubrication and cleaning. If I ever use IPA, that's isopropyl alcohol, I will ever only use one sort and it's this type here. This is 99.9% .9 IPA. I don't know what, what too sure what the 0.1% is, I think it's an additive to stop you drinking it, is the thought. But if you use less than 99.9%, because .9 I know there is a 70% around, which is best for hand sanitizer in my view, then if it's 70% 70 70 um, IPA, then it must be 30% of something else. And that 30% is water. So anytime you want to lubricate your loco with water, crack on. I think it's a ridiculous idea. So not, not lubricate, but clean your loco or even your track with something that's thirty percent water. Crack on, but you know this is not a wise thing to do, in my opinion. You may know better, and if you do, then please leave a comment. But I only use ninety nine point nine percent, and in these COVID days, it can be a little difficult to get hold of. But please don't go and buy the seventy percent, thinking it's going to do seventy percent of the job. It isn't. It's just you're going to get 30% of water, which is just dreadful. So, lubrication, what do I use? Well, many years ago, I bought this little applicator from Gage Master. It's just a very light oil recommended for use on locomotives. A good friend of mine, Richard, has a pack from Woodland Scenics, and it's a pack of oils and greases. And if you're interested in the item number, it's hashtag HL. 650 from Woodland Scenics and inside there are seven tubes and the one I'm interested in is HL655 Hobby, Hobby Lube Gear Oil. So if it's a gearing system i.e. a meshing gear I'm going to use this stuff and if it's just a bearing sort of um, around the wheels and that kind of stuff then I'm going to or axles then I'm going to use this light glue. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not suggesting you do it. That's what I'm going to try on this locomotive and see how we get on. Now, sadly, when you read the instructions, remembering that these were printed in 2002, in general, the mechanism of this model requires running in without a load for approximately one hour in each direction at moderate speed to allow the gear train to bed in. Good stuff. When required, no time scale here, obviously. Sparing lubric sparingly lubricate the motor bearings using a plastic compatible light oil and the gear train with a model grease. And that's all it says. 
And when you look into the diagrams of it, of where, the points where you need to grease, um, it's all great. You know, we can see that the motor bearings need oiling. You can't get to the motor, be motor bearings whatsoever. It's very, very difficult to see in without a total dismantle. And I wouldn't totally dismantle it unless, of course, there was something seriously wrong with it. So what do we do? Well, you kind of botch your way through, I suppose, don't you? We oil what we can see and we grease the gear trains that we can see. And that's what I intend to do. But should we first look at cleaning rather than lubricating? Because we need to look at the wheels and make sure they're clean. So how do wheels get dirty? Well, it's kind of oxidisation and carbon pickup from running around on track, isn't it? And obviously the flange touches the top of the rail and you know you get a current flow and you get a carbon buildup and it needs to be hacked off. Your wives may well disagree with this, but there are only four methods of cleaning, and that is abrasion, whether that be rubbing things together, um, chemical, such as washing up liquid or IPA to remove something. There's heat and there's time. And if you look at it from a washing machine's point of view, then, well, the, clo the, the clothes rub together in hot water. There's two of them straight away. And we put in a chemical, which is your washing powder, and it takes about an hour to wash. There's your four things. So when you're cleaning locomotive wheels, those are the things you want to think about. I think we can rule out heat because you're not going to exactly take a blow lamp to it. So it's the sort of things you want to do, you can either use an abrasive um, method of removing the carbon build upon your wheels and, your, and the insides of the wheels where the pickups go. You can use a chemical uh, to do it. And of course, time comes into it because it takes time to rub the stuff off. So where do we go from here then? Well, what I think I'll do is we'll try and do a close up and lubricate the little bits that we need to get to before we put the shell back on. Then we'll pop the shell on, then we'll turn it over. We'll clean up the wheels if they need doing, um, clean the pickup areas and um, then oil the axles and hopefully it shall all be good to go. One other thing to mention on this particular loco before we finish is um, how the power gets to the head codes. Now the head codes on this locomotive are powered from these small four pick up, uh, uh, electrical contact points on the top there. So before I put this back on, I will clean those four points and the four little springs on the inside of, uh, of the body shell with um, I, an IPA, uh, sorry, with IPA and a cotton bud. Now if I zoom right in, hopefully you might be able to see the edge of a worm gear just behind the driver. And if I put this little torch in, and you may be able to see a load of grease that uh, is on the end of the worm. Now, if I can try to pick it off, and there you can see the excess grease um, that's coming, well, it's just been building up for years and years. So what I'll try and do is remove some of that. It's not really doing a great deal. And it will only cause more harm than good. But it shows at least then over these last few years, well, Actually, there's a lot more down there than I thought, but it doesn't necessarily uh, do any good now. So what I shall do is remove what I can from both ends with a cocktail stick and, uh, and then I'll add some more grease accordingly. Well, using our old friend, the cotton bud, hopefully you can see that I removed a fair amount of the grease. Taking care, of course, not to leave residues of the, of the cotton bud itself in and around the, the gearing. And we're just about cleaned out. So what I shall do now is I'm going to add some of this Woodland Scenics HL655 gear lube. 
Now it comes with a little cap on the end of the bottle and hopefully you can see the consistency of this gear oil. So I pop some on here and you can see how it kind of drags as opposed to the light engine oil which is very much just an ordinary oil. You can see it just spreads out and thins whereas this is much more <laughs> greasy. <laughs> right so I shall pop some of this in here and then we can reassemble. I must apologise that you can't actually see this going in as <laughs> it's not man out. Um, but it's just a case of dabbing it in onto those gears and the same on the other one. then hopefully it should be much better or at least no worse anyway right so I did also mention about cleaning off these small little tabs with IPA to avoid using large quantities of this stuff it only gets you knocked over and I must confess I have the door open there um, because this can be a little bit fumey so what I'm going to do is clean these little pads up and, and also the corresponding contacts inside the locomotive body shell. Okay, right, there we are. So I shall pop this back together, make sure I'm the right way around, yep, because the speaker is underneath the hole in the vent. So pop these back together and I shall screw this down and then just check those lights work to make sure we're uh, going in the right direction. Now you may be aware that I own a Zeller rolling road and I do quite like rolling roads. It allows you to test your logos off the track. Um, you can see their sort of functionality besides trying to chase them around there. And you can also, if the body shells off, you can oil them as the gears are turning kind of thing. So. What I thought I would do with this is, if I fit it across one of the bogies, excuse me while I make sure this is aligned. If I put it upside down onto one of the bogies and I can then power the, bo the, power the train through those bogies from my faithful old Dynamis. So if I get this up to half speed, so power's going in here and obviously this bogey's turning, which gives me then the ability, and it's sorry, stopping because it just needs a little bit more weight on here. And it gives me the ability then to clean the insides of the wheels where the pickups are. So dipping the faithful old Johnson's cotton bud in the IPA that's 99.9 percent .9 isopropyl alcohol and then pop this cotton bud onto the inside face of the wheel and lo and behold as you can see it gets some of the muck off of the wheel and then it's just a case of continuing to do this until it comes clean and you know that the, obviously then the pickups are probably as clean as you can get them. 
and there we are nice and clean so if I do the other face I don't know if you can see that it might you can see it with the other one was shining so if I pop that onto here and as you can see there's the muck coming off So talking about, I mentioned about the cleaning method, well this is time and chemicals and abrasion. And there it is nice and dirty. So we'll keep changing cotton buds until it comes clean. And then it's just a case of replacing, uh, of repeating on every face. Unfortunately this is a bobo, so we've only got the four, axles, the four driving axles to sort out. And there's that one nice and clean. I shall do the wheel faces while I'm here on the, uh, the, the pickup sides. I must admit mine do tend to be, <laughs> do tend to be quite clean he said until he turned the cotton bud over. Obviously not as clean as I thought they were. And then it's just a process of going through wheel by wheel. Well I can certainly see the surface of the wheel is now so much cleaner uh, than the one opposite. I won't bore you to death with doing them all, I'll get back to you when I'm finished. Now just before I start on the other bogey, hopefully you can see here that this is the one that I've done and that's the one I've yet to do, so you can see how much more cleaner the wheel faces are. Um, might be difficult to see the insides from there um, but rest assured they are much cleaner. Well there we are with all four axles done and I must confess they have never looked that clean since the day I bought them. It just goes to show how much kind of abuse we, uh, we throw at our locos but it's the actual wheel surfaces and the inner surfaces of the wheels where the pickups are. Right, so all we need to do now is a drop of oil and a test run. The last thing to do then is just a, just a drop of oil on the inside of each of the axles. And I'm sure that will find its way into the bearings. And we're good. So, a quite straightforward exercise. All we need now is we'll whip it back onto the rolling road and give it a test. So there it is all back together. And it all seems fine. If I bring the sound on So we just need to run it on the layer itself. Well this brings us on to the Hi-Mec and in accordance with the good book this is a 2003 production and the maintenance is very much similar to that at class 25 except of course just the dismantling so all I shall show you is how to get into this and um, I don't think it's one for the faint-hearted but we shall see. Um, in of course the, uh, the instructions you just need to prise it apart but what I suggest you do is using bits of um, what do you call it business cards is turn it over. Remember these horns are so so fragile and then there are four locating lugs and all you need to do is pop a business card down each side and whatever you do to this to a high mech is get rid of the body shell first because um, like I say, those, those horns are absolutely um, well they're just so they are just so so fragile right and then hopefully the top will come away just like that 
put it away, jobs are good. And next we need the cradle. What have I done with that? There we go. And then just pop it in the cradle. The next thing is, um, is to get into the wheels. Now these, the suspension units here, which is obviously moulded plastic, it's not quite obvious, but they just prise out. Easy. And then you're left with this affair here. But how do you get in and grease the wheels? Well, if I prise this one out, you'll kind of see how I do it. There are four locating tabs that hold it in. And once it's out, it's more obvious how you get in there. So just bear with me while I do this. using here is a ordinary kind of instrument screwdriver affair. God, God. You must be sat there cringing. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is force a screwdriver underneath the whoops, didn't want that bit then. It's under, trying to force a screwdriver underneath a lug. Ah, there we go. And now hopefully you can see those are the four lugs and they snap over. Now if I come in close on the gears and hopefully you can see there's the gear chain and these wheels will just lift out. And then there are the pickup springs. So it's all kind of straightforward, as I always tend to say, and it's quite easy to clean these all up. So what I suggest you do if you have a high mech and you're not, um, <laughs> you're not, uh, you are a little foolhardy, let's say, is you prise those off to get those lugs away. That will lift off, just do one end at a time. Um, and then you can lift the wheels out and grease the gears, pop the wheels back in, reassemble it, and then clean the wheels up. Um, similarly, exactly what I did on the um, Class 25 earlier. And as you can see, these wheels are somewhat um, in need of a bit of TLC. So, there we go, that's how you get into a high mech. And when you reassemble it, of course, you've got to make sure that the pickup springs are on the insides of the wheels and then simply pop it all back together. And if you read the instructions, it says nothing about this whatsoever. Nothing about you know, really where to grease it and how, how the mechanism works. It's just a case of um, you know, being a bit bold, get some very, very good light, a nice pointy sharp screwdriver and getting in there. But would I really do it if there was nothing wrong with it in the first place? Well, it says about greasing it and oiling it, but you cannot do anything here without removing these two panels. Now, this isn't necessarily best practice, but what I want to do is to lubricate these gears and give them a quick turn. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop a nine volt alarm battery, smoke alarm battery is, there and you can see they turn. So here's that um, Woodland Scenics HL655 gear lube again. But let's see if I can zoom you right in this time. Then hopefully you can see that there. And if I give it a blast with the battery, hopefully that will... ...help bed itself in with the system. Lovely, I think that's enough.
and of course you didn't have to put any oil anywhere near any pickups and things. So what I shall do now is I shall pop the wheel sets back in and then reassemble it. If you've ever considered going on to EM gauge and that kind of thing, then obviously this is how you change the wheels over. Um, on a high mech it's kind of straightforward. Or if you want to replace these for, um, let's just say, a, uh, a more fine scale wheel, then obviously this is how you do it, by just by you know, lifting these panels off and switching the wheels straight over. And a replacement set of wheels, um, nickel silver, I think they're about £35. Um, yeah, an expensive swap, but um, some people swear by those new wheels, that, and these really are quite um, troublesome to maintain, let's say. OK, so I shall reassemble this and do the same on this side and then we'll get the rolling road out and I shall uh, do the inside faces and the wheels, make sure the pickups are clean and reassemble it and, uh, and get back to you. And there she is all back together and she runs sweet as a nut. One thing I didn't do um, is I forgot to crew this one up. Um, so she still um, sits without drivers, but, uh, but there we go. But what are the little steam loci I hear you say? So here she is, this little H1 Atlantic. Well, it was stuttering and going all over the place when you saw it running earlier. So um, in the breaks of filming when I've been doing, doing the edit, I've left it run and it's probably run for a pair of hours and it's bedded itself in nicely and it doesn't stop on every set of points. It doesn't stop at all, but it still isn't quite run in. So what I think I shall do with it now is I'll pop a drop of oil just on the um, the coupling gear on the on the on the rod gear, and we'll take it from there. Oh, one thing I forgot. Sorry, 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 sorry. You saw the text inserts about this. When you put the wheels in, the wheels have insulated uh, sections on the axles. So if it's if it's the one side, if it's if it's on one one end, it's these two, and on the other, it's the other two. So they must be um, uh, di diagonally opposed so if you have one of these and you're going to do it check it out first which way around they go um, I put it back together and it, it didn't seem to work right and then I looked at that and I thought yeah that's what I've done I put it in in the wrong way one of them in the wrong no yeah one axle was the wrong way around so please check them before you take it apart it's always best to lose learn from other people's mistakes rather than your own right so what should we do with this well I'm going to drop another um, few drops of oil on this linkages, set back to the layout, and then we'll do the retiming and see if we've achieved anything. So where are we going to oil it? Well, I think it's pretty obvious really, isn't it? We know where steam engines have their issues. And then we'll drive it on the rolling road to get that oil into the locomotive and then we'll take it back onto the track and I think it's fair to say there's a few things that I've used here that I couldn't do without first thing is 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol decent cotton buds a rolling road now I know it's these things can be pricey let's say you know um, it's around about 45, 50 quid from um, James at DCC Train Automation. Um, he sells these. Um, I really couldn't do without those. Um, decent oils. Um, yeah, I like this oil. I'm not too sure whether the Woodland Scenics ones are a good investment because I'm not too sure that you'd actually use all of them. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll do some more investigation on oils over the, over the next few months and perhaps get back to you on that one. And whilst we're on the subject of, of oil and lubrication and that kind of stuff, if you'd like me to do a video on track cleaning, then don't forget to leave a message down below. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, give us a thumbs up because it always helps to promote these videos. In a second, we're going to go back and just do the quick retimings. I'll let you know if there is any, any improvement. But in the meantime, I'd like to give a plug to all the Facebook pages that allow me to advertise my videos on. I do appreciate your understanding. 
um, and it hopefully brings more people into our marvellous hobby. So thank you very much for your understanding the sponsors and editors of those pages. Right, let's get on the layout and have some fun. Well, the class 25 is three seconds slower. And the high rec is five seconds faster. And the H1 Atlantic, well, it now manages to go completely around the layout without stopping, but remains one of the noisiest locos known to man. So the results, well, the power consumption on the locos uh, stayed the same. The class 25 dropped its speed by three seconds and the high mech increased its speed by five seconds. So what does that tell you? Scientifically, I have the faintest idea what that means, but the results are the results. On a more serious note, why should we service our locos? Well, um, in all truth, I think the best thing you can do if they are performing faultlessly is leave them alone. Only when they get, in, you get snags or they're starting to slow down or stutter over points or you know, when you know you're going to get uh, power pickup problems, then you need to look at it. But tread very carefully. That, pulling that high mech apart was no, no joke. That was quite a difficult little job there and I w couldn't really see how to get it apart and it was a case of, sort of prizing it here and there. And there's a note there for manufacturers. If you tell us to grease the worm gear, how are we supposed to get to the worm gear? So perhaps a more considerate approach to your um, documentation and, and for your technical authors to do the job prior to you know, the customers getting hold of it is worthwhile. We can't maintain locos if we don't know how to you know, get into them in the first place or what tools we should have or whatever. So please help us to help you. It's quite serious that way, really. I have to stop that. Anyway, that wraps up this video. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Um, and as usual, I would like to thank my patrons. Guys, it's you that make it all possible. Don't forget to subscribe if you can. If you'd like to make a donation, there's a link in the, in the seat show more tab below. Any questions, just jot them down. In the meantime, there should be a video here and here, and I'll see you in two weeks time. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.